the way they did it was that when Elsie got up, she would carry Rose up and put her in Mary's bed, which is on another, is another extra room. And, they, and then uh, Rose would sleep her by until uh, Mary got up, and then Mary would take her in a playpen over to the kitchen where she's the chef. So we don't know when this is for a while. When Rose climbed onto Mary's bed, Mary was having a musical dream, or had just had a musical dream. The notes were all over the room, the room in her dream, the room she was in, the bed she was in, the bed that listed toward Rose. The notes faded in the sunlight that was blinking in her face. Rose laughed. Mary tried to hum and made a sound that made Rose laugh again. Mary cleared her throat and half opened her eyes. Green leaves were stirring outside the window, not in time with the song. It wasn't that she woke up not knowing where she was. There was no wall or window off by 90 degrees waiting for wakefulness to spin it into place like a compass needle. It was that she didn't know when. She was fog-bound in time among wisps of songs she'd sung to Rose. The one that was fading in the light might have been one of them. Now she heard a bar or two from Rose's baby days. Where is Thumpkin? Hush, little baby, don't you cry. But then suddenly there was a cold porter. You're the top. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. That was too racy for the baby Rose. <laughs> then passing through in a single breath the complete stanza of a sailor's horn, horn, horn pipe. And when we get to the black wall docks, and pretty young girls come down in flocks, and one to another you can hear them say, oh, here comes Jack with his 12 months pay. <laughs> when was that? Tomboy Rose? Tomboy Rose. Plump Rose. It would be Moody, Moody Rose, who liked Cole Porter, who liked Gershwin's difficult in, in, in intervals, because she had an ear, and Elsie did, did, did not. But was it in a dream that Rose sang Stardust, so it broke your heart? This was making it harder for Mary, her own songs mixing with the Rose and Roses. But then she heard something simple, Rose so, so surprising Mary by clinking out a tune on, on her toy xylophone. You are my sunshine from beginning to end. Surely that was a real memory. The way Mary heard it now, heard it melt, melt into Red River Valley and heard herself singing and Rose joining in. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. Just remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy who loved you so true. Herself singing the Welsh lullaby, sleep my child and do not waken all through the night. And little genius rose breaking in, 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 in to men of Harlech, and quite right. It was nearly the, the, same, the, the same tune. But then, had Rose really made all the Tashira women and some of the men weep when she sang Alp, Ave Maria at, at, Sil at, at, at Sylvia's wedding? Had that really ha happened? Each note, each note pure, the phrasing as easy and sweet as a, as a rock curling over a rock. Was that the music in, in her dream? Was her dream one of those dreams that trailed on into waking, letting the dreamer undream gently, measured by measure? Mary didn't want to turn her head. She turned her head and find a little girl who had not learned the songs Mary had sung to her, who had not taken on Mary's ear or voice or even that bit of meat on her, on her, on her, on her bones. She, she turned her head. Rose put her hand on Mary's shoulder and sang, Lazy Mary, will you get up? Will you get up? Will you get up? And Mary felt the weight of Rose's hand, looked up at Rose's arm, bared the shoulder of her summer dress and arm, as round and full as Rose, the dress was Elsie's. Um, 